Hey guys, I'm just going to attempt the multiple choice section for the two unit practice test one. If this helps you, I hope it does. Um, you know, be sure to just learn from it, I guess. So, first off, y equals 2x to the power of 3 minus 7x to the power of 2 plus 4x minus 1. All they want us to do is differentiate it, so it's just a simple differentiation dy over dx equals 3 times 2, because, yep, yeah, 6x minus 1 to the power of 2 minus 14x and plus 4 so that's the differentiated version that should be your answer and on the sheet the answer for this is B okay moving on find all x values for which the function y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8 is increasing so for the first thing in this is when it says increasing we, we know how to find this and that is through basically differentiating this and making this function bigger than 0 so let's do this so let's just do dy dx equals 2x minus 6 so then we know that this function has to be bigger than 0 for it to be increasing. So let's just do that here on the side. So we go 0 is smaller than 2x minus 6. So then the 6 can move on to the no other side because it's just like a normal equation that you can solve now. 6 moves on to the other side. Then it's 6 is smaller than 2x. Divide everything by 2. So this cancels. And we end up getting... 3 is smaller than x. So for everything that x is bigger in than 3, it is increasing. This should be your answer. So this is your answer, and the answer should be D. Now, moving on, let's just have a look. Now this one, it's asking for d2y, so it's d to the power of 2y over d to the power y power to the power of 2 given y equals x to the 5 minus 2x to the 3 plus 4. It's asking for the second differentiation. So the the second derivative, my bad. So all we have to do in this case is uh, just uh, pretty much differentiate this function twice. So let's do this. So f dash y equals 5x to the 4 minus 6x to the 2 plus uh, that goes away, my bad. And then for the second differentiation, we get 20x to the 3 minus 12x. That's pretty much it. That should be your answer. And as I can see on the sheet itself, the answer is D. So it's D. So let's move on to the next one. Evaluate log 27 correct to two decimal places. Now, this one isn't so hard. If you remember the change of base rule, that's basically all we're going to do right now. We're just going to use that rule, so let's just have a look. Log 27 equals log 7 over log 2. As simple as that. Now, all you have to do for that is shove it straight into your calculator, and you should get this answer. You should get 2.81. Now the change of base rule, uh, you should be able to find it in your notes, but it's just like this. So suppose we have log, um, let's call this m and n. The log of base, the log change of base rule just works like this. It's log n over log m. Now you can just chuck that straight into your calculator and you'll get it. So this is like the a little rule that you can possibly remember. So good luck with that and see if you can remember this because that's the change of base rule. If it says evaluate, they want you to get the final answer. And in this case, we have evaluated and that is 2.81. And it does two decimal places. So that's pretty much it for that question. Now this one. This one, some people might find tricky, but... It's actually one of my favorites. Find the equation of the parabola with the focus negative 8, 0, and the directrix x equals 8. So let's just have a look. In a, in, in a uh, parabola, right, if the directrix is 8 and the focus is negative 8, then that probably means that the vertex itself, so the vertex, is 0, 0. Now, the reason being is because the focal length determines this point and this point and we know that it's moving up by it's moving down by a and it's moving up by a therefore we can conclude that 0 0 is the vertex and also now let's just figure something else out now since the x value is changing right we know that the graph if we're going to plot this graph it would look uh, 
in just a rough sense, I'll, I'll do a proper plot later, but if we were going to plot this graph, since the focus is negative, it looks something like this, right? Let's just say that was our graph, that's our focus, and that's our directrix, x equals 8. But um, I'm just going to figure this out for you guys now. So, vertex 0, 0, so the general form for this would be something like y squared equals, now let's figure this out. Um, okay, so what is it actually moving by? So it's moving by 8's, but it is a negative. So it, the general form is y squared equals 4a, plus minus 4a. So in this case, since the directrix is positive, or it's, it's actually moving up, we can say that this is going to be a negative in front. So that's one step closer. So we get y squared equals negative 4a. Now, we need to figure out what this 4 is, what this entire 4a thing is. So what would you divide by 4 to get you 8, right? Now, um, let's just have a look. So d what would I divide by 4 to get me 8? Um, uh, I would say I would divide 32 by 4 to give me 8, correct? So we can just say y squared equals negative 32, right? And that's all we really have to say, negative 32 x. So that is pretty much it. Now, suppose, like, now we found the equation, but I know you guys are probably not even with me since I've said it in such a complicated manner. So I'm just going to explain it a bit more. Suppose that we had to find the vertex, and uh, suppose we had to find the focal point and the directrix using this formula. This is how I would do it. So since I know that this general form already is going to be vertex 0, 0, because there's uh, no actual shifts, I can just instantly say vertex 0, 0. Now to find this uh, focal length, all I have to do is say negative 4a equals negative 32, right? Now I can just put this over negative 4, cancels out, this over negative 4, and then I end up getting something like 8, right? So that's my focal length. I figured it out. Now, since there was a negative in front, I know that it's going to, the uh, focus is going to be in the negative side. So all I have to do for focus is minus 8 off the x value. So I will get minus 8, 0. And now for the directrix, I just do the opposite. I'll add on to the x value. So I'll get 8, Zero. Now, th this is the information they gave us from the beginning, and we turned that into a formula. I just wanted to show you how I could uh, undo that to the general uh, things that you need, the focus and directrix. Now, let's just graph this, just finishing off. So I'm just going to use a nice color for this. I'll use something like purple. Okay, so here we go. Sorry for my really crappy graph, but it's what I can do right now. Um, vertex, zero, zero. So I'm just going to use different points for this. That's our vertex. Then we've got uh, focal length, this is 8, so we know that. Focus is negative 8, 0. So let's say negative 8's here. Um, negative 8, 0. We'll call that S. And then we've got our directrix, which is at 8. Sorry for the really crappy drawing, guys. Um, 8. So now we can just graph this out. We know that the whatever the actual parabola is, the the focus has to be inside of it. So let's just do this. I'm just going to use a different color for this as well. So I'm just going to go, here we go. And there. That is our parabola. That is our graph. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.